What is good? We're back. And we have so many stats that you need to know. That none of your idiot non-nerd league mates know about. Today, we're going to take a brief overview of weeks one through three, and then week three by itself as well. But we're going to be looking at target share, air yard share, first downs per route run, oh. first read target percentage, and some other things, yards per route run, dot. Oh. Lots of other things, but a dot. A lot favorite. of this information is going to be brought to you by Fantasy Points Data. They've got a great little uh, website, a great big website. I shouldn't call it little. They're running a, a, a strong operation over there with a lot of good information. But we're going to take a brief overview. We're going to tar- start with target share. We're going to look at some of the top guys. We're going to try to maybe find some obtainable guys that aren't terribly expensive that that I saw pop up on a bunch of different things. Obviously, there's a lot of different filtering that you can do, and you can kind of narrow anything down. And that's kind of the the part of some numbers is, as they say, they don't lie, but you can certainly manipulate them to lie. And but that's not the point of men um, lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. <laughs> well, I can, neither does this guy. I just want to throw him up there. Look at Darnell Mooney. Finally, into Dar- wish. Darnell Mooney going to be one of the guys that Vindicated. we that we highlight at some point here Shout to, to obtain ability and and some some stuff that's looking really good popped up. Is on he obtainable? Place. He's been a hot fire. Oh yeah, so. nobody's nobody's really nobody cares. I don't. They, they weren't they weren't at all care. to with, but. Let's start with target share. Obviously, Malik Neighbors is having a great start to his career. He's at the top of the target share percentage of 35.2. Rashi Rice, af- absolutely slaying it. I don't care if you're a manufactured merchant. I'm so sick of that kind of shit. But Rashi's just crushing. Uh, we're about to do the, the rankings every four weeks or so. We're going to try to update rankings for your pleasure. And I'm real excited to see where Rashi and Malik Neighbors, how far those guys have climbed up. How far could he go with a 4.4 A dot? That's got to be bottom. Who, who cares? Look at the target percentage. He's he's 31.5 percent. The A dot. Nobody cares about if you if you're crushing that hard in a bunch of other categories, you can overlook the A dot. Yeah, um, no shit. Where's Amin, that? Yeah, I'm in Ross St. Brown doing his thing. Uh, Chris Godwin back in the slot, crushing. Garrett Wilson, number five in target share. Look, it's coming for Garrett Wilson. We highlighted it last week. It was pretty good this week. Um, but as Rodgers and Salah talked, hey, they're shading everything to that side. But as you start to have all these other weapons develop a little bit, and weapons we could call it lightly because it's not anything sexy, but as Lazard comes into his own, which he looks like he Look a decent. looks like he went over to Germany and got a little fountain of youth. You know, yeah. he, he's looking he bigger. He's looking stronger. good out there. Mike Williams is coming back. How long it'll last, we don't know. Uh, but Mike Williams coming back. Brees Hall is probably the second best receiver on that team right now. Braylon Allen emerging as a one two nice one two punch out of that backfield. So, so good. things are coming along and you have to remember that these guys haven't spent much time together. Garrett Wilson, the timing you could just tell is not quite there. There was a back shoulder throw in that game where Rodgers and Devontae obviously had worked together for a long time, but that was something with a quick head nod and a look over that that was money all day long. And Garrett will, Garrett will get there. They'll get there together. This is a, has been a very small amount of time that they've had to do this. And each week you've seen growth with how they're playing together and the, how the Jets are playing together. Uh, and that's kind of the most important thing. And then you saw everything kind of open up for Tyler Conklin this week. He'll probably make an appearance here at some point. But Devonta Smith crushing with his target share. Obviously, A.J. Brown's been missing some time now. Devonta Smith might make some time. Michael Pittman, we talked about him last week in the buy sell holds 27.4%. So still holding on strong with some target percentage. Josh Downs came in this week, had a, had a pretty high target percentage. So we'll see how that comes out. We just have we have to have some patience with Anthony Richardson's play because he's basically played like 19 games in his fucking careers and is essentially a rookie Bust. quarterback uh, as well. And we'll talk about him on the next show. Buy, sell, hold. Uh, on, Moves on to make. Justin Jefferson, QB proof, but Sam Darnold might be good. Uh, QB proof. I mean, that system's QB proof. Yeah, or well, Sam, I mean, you, you played with like four different quarterbacks last year, and he was he was still good when he was when he was out there and healthy. Say if flowers. You take away the big plays, though. <laughs> yeah, say flowers still doing his damn thing. Deontay, baby. Even though we've and and if you we'll look at week three by itself at some point here on some of these numbers, um, but Deontay Johnson putting together a hefty target share here at twenty six point six percent. And the thing with this Carolina offense now is you just got life breathed back into the fantasy assets. So Deontay just had a great uh, week three there, put up a ton of points, had fourteen targets, eight receptions, one hundred twenty two yards, and a touchdown. Look, is this going to be every week for the Panthers? No, I think they caught. The Raiders kind of sleeping a little bit here. Raiders thought they were going to walk in, have a nice, easy game. Not so much. 
they have Cincy and Chicago and Atlanta and, you know, kind of coming up. So in division game, Chicago's defense is good. Cincy, we're, we're you know, I, they're good enough to give you a game. But I, I think you just got a big sigh of relief for usable fantasy assets, especially Deontay Johnson. They were talking in, in the offseason about how they needed somebody they could focus in on the offense. And Deontay Johnson was that guy, which is why we were excited about him. And, you know, his previous track record of being you know a, a pretty good receiver and, and the price that you had to pay for him were all great and it didn't look good through two but hey Leggett is now going to get some chances to learn how to play uh you saw one good reception from him I believe there was a flag on it uh but he caught one and and, and was was running out there Chuba Hubbard was able to have a day uh you could you could see how this offense was just functioning and a functional offense you had a dead offense where nobody was scared of anything and just nobody was work nothing was working feeling good about your Jonathan Brooks Thielen got a little banged up in this one uh so says he's gonna miss some time dude Great he looked Deontay. like straight out of the 60s huh yeah with that hairdo yeah. just like hey man but you know, Thielen was doing his thing. So, you know, they were they were moving the ball a little bit. So now we're going to see what Mingo can do. We're going to see what Leggett can do. Like you said, your Jonathan Brooks owners, I think, just took a sigh, another sigh of relief of like, hey, there was a chance that we don't see this guy at all this year if things were going as bad, or at least you didn't want to. Don't want to see him. But now, if I we can see this game at all, if we can just have a semi competent offense and bring Jonathan Brooks along, that's all you can ask, man. That's that's huge. So Deontay Johnson, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about him throughout this episode, but maybe one of the more obtainable pieces that we've mentioned through there. Do you want to show just the week three target shares? That's fine. Yeah, you could you could throw up the week three as well. So this is just um, the week three. Jawan Jennings had a, had an excellent game there in week three. Uh, obviously, 40% target share over there. That's crazy. But you can see there Deontay Johnson's coming in at, at three. Uh, a lot of the same names popping up throughout this thing. Neighbors, or Amon Ra. You know, Drake London's right there in week three. Lad McConkey's all over this thing. We are going to do a rookie report this week. So we're going to try to stay off the rookies a little bit in this version of this show. Marv, he's he's getting some some targets and some love, getting some run. There's our guy Mooney down there, week three, number 16, 27.6 target percentage, target share. Mooney, see, when we're talking about the big guys, and we obviously know who the big guys are, but when when you see guys like Mooney out there playing on the field and you see the play on the field being looking different and then you can see him pop up on these stats those are going to be the actionable pieces that you can pick up and Darnell Mooney is popping up in a lot of these parts and pieces now you might have to do some filtering because week one was kind of a mess for uh, Atlanta but if you filter to week two and three um, which you don't have to do right now but Mooney was leading the team in team market share yard percentage was 32.7 yards yards per route run or 2.66 which is really good his first read percentage 27 percent now Drake's at 43 percent but he's he's the lead dog uh, but to see Mooney up here on this list working on the field and and here that's what's that two and three? Oh yeah yeah, so you see two and three there. Mooney not terribly f b behind on the target share. Look at my boy. Tigers. Go Tigers. Ray Ray. You know, and, and Ray Ray again. That's, How's he out targeting, sharing pits? Well, What's going he, on? He here? had a huge week one. They're wasting so, pits. But this is just two and three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, Mooney, Mooney up there in a lot of categories. Like I said, 2.66 yards per route run. First read target, 27%. Drake's up there at 43, really high. But then his passer rating when targeted, 136.3 is is really high so doing good things for kirk kirk starting to find him a little more had a nice game against the eagles had another good game against the chiefs barely yesterday. salvaged the game against the eagles it, it was that last drive i mean he had the touchdown but then he didn't have anything else until that last drive right. but and nobody did that's what i'm saying like the the offense you know kind of started this last game started it was more efficient more spread out more well, you're, you're constant just, right you're consistent. seeing it, you're seeing atlanta start to figure things out come to life a little bit Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. We said when we first came out here and talked about Atlanta week one, we knew what the schedule was going to be. It's a It was a gauntlet to start the season. You were lucky to get the one win against... The Eagles there from them boys not taking the points when they maybe should have in the beginning of the game. And then you had the Chiefs over here who <clears throat> Pitts for sure got fouled in the end zone. He should have had another set of downs. 
you didn't. You got bailed out by maybe another call in the next series, but it's not the same as being inside the 10 with four four new sets of downs. Uh, I digress. But Mooney is somebody who is, is, is very, very obtainable out of a lot of the lists that we're saying. See, there's the first reads on two and three. 43 for Drake, but then 27 is still a really good number uh, for that first downs per route run, missed targets. Uh, so... A lot of a uh, lot of good stuff there for, for Mooney. Obviously, we know Drake's going to be the dog, but and, and but Mooney showing up high in a lot of these stats really speaks well for him. And, and like I said, it's matching the things you're seeing on the field. He's we've always liked him. He's always been explosive. He's always been shifty. He's always been hard to deal with. Just, you know, in that offense that he was in, you saw it for a year. And then you basically, you know, you're going to get one or two guys. And that was commit and. Dude, and DJ Moore. I pushed so hard for Mooney, I couldn't even say his name anymore. I was <laughs> like, it's it's I, how how long can you, you know, it's too long before they hit in Dynasty. Which yeah. I mean, what, how how many years has this man been in here? Let me get a few. Um, <laughs> so some other guys in the in the target share while you're finding that Amari Cooper uh, finally kind of paid dividends and this he, is fifth year. He stayed up in there. Amari like I said, Cooper. lads, lads been all up in there with his target share. He's at eleventh. Um, George Pickens staying strong. Nico staying strong at the top. Trey McBride, 24.4% might be injured. Uh, we shall see. Drake London at 22%. DK Metcalf might be maybe the most obtainable guy on like big guy on this list uh, that we're kind of going through right now. All those other names we get, we talked about outside of maybe somebody like a DJ Moore, maybe not be too obtainable, but DK has been putting up two good weeks here back to back 20 plus points are you looking at just weeks two and three uh this is one through three okay he's putting up some some very solid uh wide receiver numbers obviously he had the big play this week but that's <laughs> what's gonna happen well if you take gonna, away the big play you're gonna have some big plays and so dk where is he at um tw- i got him at 21 here in target percentage sorry i had it filtered on just week three so here's week one through three yep 21 yeah, so just wanted to hit over those some of those numbers there. Look at some some different things, but you know, my takeaway was kind of DK Cortland popping up there, and now Cortland's at twenty three percent. Now, when we when you dive into Denver's numbers a little bit there, um, and you start looking at the team breakdowns, there's a, a catchable pass rate, and you know, obviously Cortland's getting a lot of targets and his target percentage is, is pretty good inside the top 25. Uh, but when you look at that, he's at like 58% of catchable targets. Whereas, you know, Josh Reynolds and little Jordan Humphreys, <laughs> I can't even say his name without laughing. I can't believe that guy's getting so much run. <laughs> yeah. Now you're on the screen there. So you can see 57% of his targets are catchable there. And if we could get anywhere in the little Jordan Humphreys or Josh Reynolds area there, even if we just went up to like 70 percent and he's having the target share that he's having, you could see how quickly Cortland could really start exploding. Now he's dealing with a rookie quarterback. They, they won a game. Well, I didn't expect him to win this week. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe we could start seeing things we up some building blocks and, and week over week. You're going to see some up and down. But if we could just get that target rate just up, like I said, even to high 60s, 70s, Cortland's just sitting there primed for a great spot in your fantasy lineup. I know nobody loves him because he's 28 and the offense kind of is, is a little weird, but there's some opportunity percolating there that, that really could pop off if we could just get a little bit more of a catchable ball thrown his way. So he popped up quite a bit on a lot of these stats there. He's, he's obviously their lead dog, but a lot of, a uh, lot of good information here through the fantasy data, fantasy points data uh, website. So if you're not on there, make sure you go check that out. Let's keep it moving here. Let's go to air yards share. So the percentage of the team's air yards here. You see a lot of familiar faces on here like we just had on that other list. Malik Neighbors, no, number one, just crushing. George Pickens, way high up there. Calvin Ridley, Devonta Smith, Raheed Shaheed had a, had a big one this week uh, and, and dropped it. Also, the corner kind of knocked it out of his hands a little bit, but could have could have kept the streak going. Uh, but we're going to see Chris Olave come to life. They haven't had, like we mentioned last week, they haven't had a game where they had to stay competitive all four quarters and they had to stay competitive all four quarters. And Olave won the game. And a lot, well, they didn't win the game. but Oh, they put him up. They should have won the game, yeah. <laughs> Olave put him in position. Thought that was it. Yeah. I tuned out. <laughs> yeah. Six games at once. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. Amari up there. You know, you're seeing a lot of these Did not names. win him the game. <laughs> no, no. But he finally busted out. And, and Oh, man, if they'd have had Amari on that last play instead of fucking Cedric Tillman. Oh, Amari yeah. was crushing. 
But great there's, to see that. There's Deontay Johnson again, so he's up there again. So it's just, it's there for Deontay. If we can keep good quarterback play happening, you, you can obtain Deontay Johnson for a lot less than a lot of these guys. Cortland Sutton right there again, 11 in air yard shit. You know what I mean? It's He's there on and a lot of these. Air yard shit is good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Garrett Wilson right there. Uh, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans. Look at the, all air the yard big Air yard shit is certainly a stat your idiot league mates don't know about. <laughs> Those books were down here when I fell. There's, I'm not a still, nerd. They're still just looking at air yards. We're looking at <laughs> shares. All right. Those books were down here when I fell. I'm not a nerd. If you catch that reference, hit me in the comments below. Roma Dunze, 35.5%. Bust. You know, <laughs> doing some work. <laughs> Obviously, Pierce has been the best threat for, yeah. for the uh, Colts right now. Where is he at? Oh, 17. 17. And we, you know, we've, those are the big highlight plays that you've seen. Rashad Bateman making an appearance. He had, he had a nice game this past so, week. Wait, if you take away big plays, Ariard share goes out the window, huh? <laughs> I mean, Romeo Dobbs on there. Uh, but uh, these, let's put it back in. I like these Dobbs. are guys who make big plays, right? Mm -hmm. um, Rashad Bateman making a, an appearance this week. Yep. But yep. what if you took them all away? Gonna want those. Uh, Lad McConkey again popping up on here. We're gonna try to. I'm not gonna talk about. Not gonna go in depth with the rookies. We're doing a rookie report, but I just I gotta keep giving my, my guy Lad some love. Where is this? Is this a dot? I would assume it was not that good. But and nine point two. Not. Uh, it's not on us. The ten threshold. I think. Is. Quentin Johnston over there, and there was Darnell Mooney uh, right there at twenty seven. <laughs> so. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good names over here for the air yard percentage. That's weeks one through three. We do have a small filter on some of these things, so it's not just like every guy who caught one ball. We're we got at least just under twenty percent right. receptions, right, or targets. One of the two. I don't know. Uh, so let's let's uh, let's keep it moving. Let's go over to uh, receptions. We'll go to targets per route run. We'll take a quick look at those. Some people like that. I'm sure your idiot league mates, as Jason likes to call them, already know about that. But I don't really like to call them that, but uh, some people do, and I think it can. A lot of the same names popping up. Rashi Rice, Malik Neighbors. Disley makes an appearance here. <laughs> um, tight ends are on the filter. Godwin, there's Ladd again, likely. And there's our guy Deontay once again. So he's all over this mug, right? Covey's <laughs> making his first appearance. It's good we're seeing Deontay because you look like an idiot for there for a minute. <laughs> dynasty baby it's not all wrapped up after two weeks you know well you just gotta have it's all there's a lot of factors at play here you wrong know? about bryce young though huh i mean yeah he's shell -shell. it's not good you gotta bench him red rifle came in three touchdowns in the Woo. first half Woo. he's our quarterback yeah i mean everything that i liked about these are our brothers this is everything i liked about carolina and i thought bryce young could operate it but he just too, was too far in the weeds at this mm. point, so we got to reset. Hey, mm. but right now we're seeing a great quarterback reset. We're seeing it happen. We're seeing guys like Geno and Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield. So, you know, it can it but can that happen. All happened with Canales. No, well, no, it didn't all happen with. Well, Canales. two of three or three you mentioned it. You know, you get you get the shannies and and the good quarterbacks. Canales had Mayfield and Geno, right? <laughs> uh, he had yeah. He but, busted with Bryce. But well, but he he's bringing back Dalton. He's well, he's you're showing that you can operate with the vision that he had. And it's not like I said, it's not going to be like this every week. But the guy who's the main beneficiary of this offense that they brought in to do so, Deontay, which is why we liked him with the cost once again, is popping up all over the place. So we like that. Dobbs was on the last list, which is our guy. And Jaden Reed's on this list. And the Packers are going through something with their quarterback. Obviously, they don't have Jordan Love in there. It seems like we'll get him back soon. The floor doing a masterful job kind of managing the situation. Willis looks, you know, like maybe the Titans should have kept Willis. It's a system quarterback. It, you know, it's just getting these systems. What, that's, it's, there's so many. There's That's why why we try to take a, a slower, more medium-paced uh, <laughs> approach here because it, it, there's so many factors at play that make all of these things work. And it's just, when it's not right, it's, it's you know, it may not work out for some other reason, but it may take a year or two. So patience, baby, patience. Um, and we're wrong plenty. I'm not coming out. You, you, mm -mm. you know, was wrong about Bryce Young having a good. But the idea was right. The wrong, the player was wrong. You meant Andy uh, Dalton. You, you <laughs> of course. I, I don't know. That up. How did I not uh, see that coming? But <laughs> so the the Packers, because of you know the quarterback play, it has probably made Jaden Reed not be completely unobtainable at this particular juncture, right? Maybe so. He's a cult hero. Well, I just I, I feel like he just hasn't taken off fantasy wise. And, and you know, I, I get that so if a smart manager would say exactly what we're saying, hey, we got to attempt. But other people don't. They're, you know, reactionary, a, a little more reactionary week over week. So Jaden Reed and Romeo Dubs will continue to pop up on these uh, as we go through. Not on the targets per route run. The, the problem with the Packers is, you know, look at all the names here. 
a bunch of good names and and you don't exactly know who's going to be who, but Jaden Reed and Romeo Dubs seem to be pretty safe assets on this team. They're going to be involved most weeks. You know, Jaden Reed and Romeo on the target shares, you can go over to yards per route run. They're 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 right there on top of each other. Um, you can go mm-hmm. you can go to uh, the first read percentage. Jaden Reed, Romeo Dubs, you know, within percentage, they're tied, actually. <laughs> um, and obviously, we're, we don't. Willis isn't in there. First downs per route run. Romeo Dubs. We kind of know what what Romeo's. You know, his air yards were good. His route runs are good. So. I like those two guys probably the most out of the Packers, and I don't think they're terribly overpriced at this point. Nobody likes Romeo. At you know, they, they think it's you know, Reed is going to be the most expensive, but I think you can still get some value on both of them. Is, is oh, like, you got to get Romeo Dubs. I mean, I, it was just like a broken record, beating a dead horse. Like we just nonstop going to bat for Romeo Dobbs, but like it, he's doing this with Malik Willis. He's been start issueable. Nah, he had two point eight points. No nine. Oh, that's the projection. Sorry. I was looking at the projection. Nine, side. nine, and two point eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a bad week. This is a great week to buy him. I mean, they shall. They, they they got a big right. Yeah, they ran the. Yeah, yeah, and like him Christian, and Love have a connection. Yeah, you know, Love's Dubs connection. Yeah, no, I, I think I think Dubs has a, a semi-defined role on this team of you know kind of moving the chains. He does get pretty good red zone targets. I, I like Romeo Dubs, and I, you know, you got to like what you're seeing from Jaden Reed. He's playing the most snaps of all these guys, too, right now. Uh, obviously, Christian Watson could easily come back and and take a big part of this offense. I, I think he's gonna at least for now just continue to be that big play splash kind of stuff. He'll he'll be a thorn in the side, and Wicks will be there too, which is why we were a little scared of this offense. And Romeo was always the guy we wanted because him and Wicks were cheap. Right, so get those guys. But I'm becoming less and less fearful of of Reed. I just feel like they're going to manufacture enough touches. I've kind of likened it to almost the Debo style of of uh, Debo point five oh. Just in, yeah, he's obviously not Debo. Nobody is, but in that the scheme that he's you coming need a guy out you of, can run the and kind of stuff that they do with him and his usages. Uh, it seems fast. similar to how Shanahan does with the, not all the running plays and shit like that, but you know, not quite. Well, but but. I mean, I'm sure he has a fair amount of attempts. A lot of motions and and you know, a lot of a lot of different ways to scheme them open. Right. That they take advantage of the skill sets their players have, and they want a guy that's good in space. Whether right. that's because you're fast, like Jaden Reed, or because you can just break every tackle well, like your Debo. Right, and and Reed he doesn't need oh, to break Reed's, every tackle. He can route run people. Reed's elusive. He's fast. He's a good route runner. He's a smart player. Um, so liking liking what we're seeing there, and and we're about to. So I think there's a potential buying opportunity for. Uh, maybe some Packers there. Definitely some Deontay Johnson. Let's go first read target percentage and take a look at some more stats that you need to know. Um, Loser. Malik, Neighbors, Rashi Rice again at the top of this list. Chris Godwin, Jefferson, Devonta Smith, Garrett Wilson, <laughs> Devontae Adams, Amon Ross. Is, and then there's Deontay Johnson again uh, at nine. Drake London. Quentin Johnston, baby. Yeah. That's again patience, guys. Patience. I don't know. What the, the hand thing, placement. The, though, the thing still. is, is when the when this people when the snowball starts gathering and then go starts rolling down the hill. It's so everyone piles on so fast of the negativity and the bad things you see. If you take away the big plays, just, <laughs> you just gotta wait, dude. They're playing with one hand tied behind their back right <laughs> now. You know. Yeah, why the quarterback's is quarterback's been there. hurt since before the season started? Yeah, he probably should not be playing at all. And, and Quinton looks Quinton looks good, man. And he's Ladd, always looked good. Ladd he just couldn't Quinton catch. There. If he could catch, that's right. it. Done deal. Somehow he learned. This right. professional athlete played million pays well, you got, you paid got million the, of dollars to. You got a, a negative guy who seemed like just an asshole out of there, and you got a positive guy who's going to build you up. And just again, the situation wasn't right. Now the, the other guy's worried about his job. This right. the next the, Harbaugh's not worried about his job. He knows and Harbaugh knows how he's going to get it done. Right, he has a plan and he's going to go execute and it. And he's, he's their confident. best option. He's confident in what he's doing, and he has no other option. The he's Quentin's gonna make the best Quentin, option. He's going to make Quentin confident, and you know. So Quentin and Ladd are, seem to be the future of this team mm. kind of moving forward. Obviously, you know, I'd love to see him add one more killer piece here. Oh, they will. They just Quentin and Ladd look the like they're going to be just this, fine yeah. uh, moving Ladd forward. You just, and Ladd's been all over this thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, you just got to have some patience. Their quarterback play, their quarterback's been hurt, and their quarterback play has just been, they want to come out and run the ball, and they've been able to. 
but also they know that they don't have a right quarterback. So all those things, <clears throat> excuse me, still got still battle in the throat thing. And there's there's Mooney. No hetero. Uh, at 28. So Mooney's again popping up kind of all over this bad Larry. Mm. Yo, Wandale, sneaky, just steady, steady Eddie. Steady Eddie, baby. That's what we, Wandale and Mooney, every every show we did with cheap buys, we threw them in there. You know, nobody's going to toot your own horn, so we try to do it. We also try to come out like, look, Trevor Lawrence is not playing well. And hot take the the Trevor Lawrence MVP MVP thing. It was (laughs) mostly just because everyone hated him. But, hey, you know, certainly. When you do a hot take show, you're, you're searching for clicks here. Right, right. Trevor Lawrence has not been good and, and you know, didn't play well tonight from what I saw. But, They're getting shellacked. Um, and, you know, just a bad situation again over there. It, the problem is, is you got somebody like, and I don't know why I just got off on this tangent, but when you have somebody hey, to the game, when you have somebody like Trevor Lawrence and then you have a situation that was really bad, you had a guy come in and clean it up. You, we've been on record of saying you should have got rid of that guy last year in the coach and the OC. get him to the playoffs. The coach so. and the OC. After last year ended, you needed to clean house. What does Doug Peterson do? Like all, like all these other coaches that are the good coaches in the league, you can pinpoint what they do, what their calling card is. Doug Peterson came in, cleaned the situation up, got him on the right path. You needed to, you needed to cut clean bait. the skeletons out of the closet. <laughs> you needed to cut bait a year ago. And I'm not blaming him for everything. Trevor makes some bad decisions. Uh, he but might be dumb. The problem is, is he was Go he's got Mark generational, and he's not generational, but he's not terrible. And but we can't ever have a middle ground on anything. He makes some great. He had the potential. He has, and it's still there. Still, yeah, he's still super young. It's the just, rushing is available. He just. But again, wrong. There's nothing you can wrong. I was yeah. I was wrong two years ago, and I was wrong again this year. Shouldn't have draft. Shouldn't have been drafting him where you did. It was, you know. Uh, so anyway. Go Tigers. <laughs> First read targets, and I don't even like the Tigers. Um, there's Cortland. I went there, so. Yeah. Cortland Sutton again popping up on this one. So just highlighting some 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 of the really good guys and that are on this list and some of the guys who are still probably a little undervalued. There's DK Metcalf. Cortland? Cortland was at 18. DK oh, well, Metcaf again up. popping up uh, at 21. Dude, I see leagues all the time where DK Metcalf gets traded for a first. Just a straight up first. Like. We're, we're moving. He's old. We're in a new era of things in, in Seattle. And I don't know if we'll even stay in Seattle. I think he's due for a contract. But we have a whole new offense, a whole new scheme that they're just figuring out. And so this should just continue to grow and get better with DK Metcalf. And he knows he needs to get paid. Like, uh, so, you know, DK out there doing his damn thing. I, like I said, well, off the rip, I think this is he's probably one of the cheaper big time assets is just you can acquire right now. I think he, he's on the books for next year. He got an he got an extension, so next right. year is the last year of his deal. But he's yeah, playing. But you know, like all, the, you you know all them. Him. You know all them boys are looking for. They, they're right. trying to get paid one year in advance. And I guess they do have a potential out, but twenty one dead. That's never going to happen. But yeah, uh, base salary of eighteen million next year. Cap hit a thirty one. They definitely need to restructure that thing. He's a Seattle guy. I'm sure he'll get an extension. It seems there. like it. they should they should keep him. He's they're, dirty. They're, they're, Seattle is trending in the right direction, man. I, I said in the offseason, I love where they're going. I love the I love the HC. I hate that they hired him and they're just going to go right from Pete to this guy who I, I hated Pete. He drives me crazy, but I really like McDonald. It's the I gum. really like what they're doing. I love his defensive scheme, and they're just. They're going to be all of a sudden right back to that Seattle just smothering defense. And then you got grubs on the offense, just figuring things out. And I, I like where they're, I like where everything's heading for the Seahawks. So DK Niners uh, fan too. So yeah, what's well, it hurts. And we just, we're just racking up injuries. Hargraves out for the year. Brock Purdy's getting an MRI on his back. What? <laughs> Steinbrenner's on the phone. George is dead. Call me back. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do one more here. First down per route run. Got to get that last one in here. I feel uh, like your idiot league mates probably know about that one. <laughs> Maybe. But they don't have fantasy data or fantasy points data here. It's expensive money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's great. All, all the love in the world to those guys putting this together. You guys are putting together quality stuff. Um, and, and shout out to uh, all the guys over there. The Scott Barrett's and the uh, it Ryan Heath, maybe. I'm, I'm, I should know his name. He's doing great work. Um, Hit us with a sponsorship. We'll get your name right. <laughs> All right. Targets first down per route run. This is another big time one here. Rashi. Rashi Godwin. He dots bad, but up there. Uh, Disley, Disley pops up again, baby. He was a, a deep stash <laughs> late, late round target of ours. So nice to see his name pop up. Olave. Yeah, tough, tough to start. See, Olave's fine. Olave's you know, up there. Down per route runs. Jefferson 
Devonta Smith, Neighbors again, Pickens again, Bowers, Jordan Whittington's up there. But one I wanted to highlight before we get out of here was Tutu Atwell. You know, obviously, Sal. They just got <laughs> they just got some injuries over Where's there. He at? Puka. Um, what number is Tutu? Tutu Atwell is five. Five. Just get right by him. So they they had some injuries in in the yeah, middle no of shit. week one, and then week two, cup goes down. So I threw a filter on with week two and three and four receptions minimum. He was number three in uh, <laughs> YPTOE. Now, what do you think that acronym stands for? If you had to guess, uh, yards per target over expected. Nailed it. <laughs> um, over expected. <gasps> number three uh, in that in that uh, category there. That did not work. Hold on a second. So filtered on just week two and three? Filtered on just week two and three going over here. You can you can go to first read percentage. Percentage or share? Well, it's percentage, but it's share, whatever. <laughs> um, you can see two twos right below Cooper Cup, and we know where Cooper Cup was doing, 31.0% uh, there. So looking, looking at him early and often. I mean, Demarcus Robinson and Whittington and Parkinson are all playing a role here and, and Johnson, but two two looked pretty good in this last game. He's getting he flashed last year. He did. And he then did it kind of fizzled out. But now they have nobody else. He's their best option. And they're force feeding him. I feel like it was a product of just the opportunity. Sure. I mean, that's what we're talking about right now, right? There's you cup, sell cups out. Well, I mean, not selling them for anything. I'm, I'm, I'm going the opposite way and saying, hey, if you need cheap, he could be out there, especially if you're listening on redraft or if you're if it's dynasty, you could get it maybe a cheap. Swip swap, swip swap on there or something, but you know there there may if you really are, are hurt and really just wanted to point out monitor uh, some two two at well and see if you can catch a roll here. But you know he's he's checking some boxes. First read percentages there, big on a lot of these categories that we've kind of been going through uh, through this process and and stats you need to know here. But first reads, first downs per route run, team market share of of yards over expected on targets so first downs per route run all checked all those boxes um and and put up a a decent game so just somebody to monitor and and look at of you know everybody bought demarcus robinson and tyler johnson and whittington in the offseason already which you know i think all those guys have opportunity but you know tutu could have some real good opportunity here for you know however long here i don't know if it's going to be how long cup's going to be out how long um puka's going to be out puka's on ir yeah, Cup's they didn't, not. They didn't put Cup on IR, so that's good, I guess. For Cup. Um, not but, for 2-2. You know, as as things go forward and, and you know, just wanted to point out that 2-2 that on the Strong Rams Strong right catchable here. target percentage there. Mm. I mean, Stafford throws a good ball. Yeah. So he was kind of the last super cheap guy that I wanted to point out that was really surprising to me to pop up on a lot of these. Overexpected. Um, obviously, because he He's for sure overexpected. Because you weren't expecting shit from him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Tutu Atwell wrapping us up today. Just wanted to point him out. He, he kind of popped up on everything that I was kind of seeing there. So appreciate you guys. Be sure to come check us out over on the Patreon, $5 holler. We got the free Discord as well. Come check that out. Too this close. is, again, all brought to you by Underdog. Uh, type in promo code FFD at checkout. Get yourself a little bonus. If you haven't done the pickums over there on the games, you can do them live in game. You can do before game. It's so much fun. Gamble responsibly, obviously. There's um, a number to call if you have a problem. But I've had Somewhere. a lot of fun Google doing it. it. We're going to we're gonna be doing, trying to do some preview stuff, but Bitco has shingles, so <laughs> he couldn't make it tonight. I was going to lead the show with that, but I didn't think he would appreciate it. They don't it. give you the, like, vaccine for that till like you're after 60 yeah, yeah, yeah. but people they younger you than that, that get it they give you that but with, i guess you're not a threat to are you at risk for rsv yeah, you might as well know. come get the shingles vaccine <laughs> i don't believe it he, he's a hypochondriac no he does he went to the doc he was fucked up and he went to the he, doctor so he says <laughs> i believe i still don't believe my stepdad has uh celiac disease. he thought he had he thought he just had bag bugs in his back and he hurt his back playing golf but apparently it was the shingles that hurt his back got the shingles on the back and on the front so maybe i'll lead off the next show with even more shingles talk so stay tuned <laughs> i need a new roof speaking of shingles they're all over the yard when a hurricane hits so uh, yeah yeah different kind of shingles if you've had chicken pox <laughs> i have had those as a kid yeah. when you're normal time to next get them, thing but. he's gonna have the gout so you gotta watch uh, anal gotta watch. leakage gotta watch out for that all right let's go <laughs> yeah. ff out of here. appreciate you guys here. catch you next week. peace <laughs>